Please turn your Holy Bible to, let me check, Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. To Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it reads, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So, for everyone who don't know, my name is Raymond, and this session of our service is called Communion. What we do is we come on stage and share about what does the cross means to us. And I'm going to share about my journey of becoming a disciple for you guys today. So, I grew up in Taiwan, and I have a little family. There's only my grandmother, my parents, my older sister, and myself. When I was young, my dad always took us to visit grandma regularly. And she always cooked me apple porridge. Doesn't matter if I'm hungry or not. <laughs> to be honest, I don't like apple porridge <laughs> at all. <laughs> but, but I do enjoy her love very well. And after graduating from high school, I went to China to get my bachelor's degree. And everything goes well until the COVID come. For whoever don't know, if you want to go back to Taiwan during COVID, you need to do a 14 days of isolation. And when you go back to China again, you need to do another 14 days of isolation. So you will be combined with 20, 28 days of isolation. And the worst part is, you need to pay all the hotel fee on your own. You need to cover all, all, all things. And so there's actually two choices in front of me every time of the vacation comes. I can rather go back to Taiwan, visit my family, pay all the money, spend all the time, or I can stay in China. At the very first year of COVID, it's very easy. Like, I'll stay in China. I'll find some internship to do. I can save some money, and I can get a lot of experience of electrical engineering. It will, good, it will be a better way for my career. And at the second year, I miss my family. But before I even ask for my parents' financial support for all the fees, they tell me that um, maybe not. It's nonsense that you come back. It's, it costs too much. So at my character at that time, I just keep silence. And I didn't even tell them that I miss them. And at the very end of the third year of COVID, um, one day, my dad called me that grandma's health is become worse and worse. You should come back to see her. But at that moment, I almost done my, I only have a graduate project left. After that, I can graduate, get my degree, and back, go back to Taiwan. So I kind of prayed to God. I said, please give me a little bit more time. And after I finally graduated, I grabbed my, I grabbed my bachelor's degree back in Taiwan. And the good news is, Taiwan changed the policy. You only need to do the isolation for seven days. I said, thanks God. And during my seven days of isolation, grandma passed away. And actually, losing uh, family members is not truly hurt me. Not the thing that really hurt me. But it's the mindset of myself that messed me up. On one hand, I want to chase for money even more. Because, you know, if you've got a lot of money, you will just spend all the fees just like that. I'll go back to Taiwan, visit her every single vacation. But on the other hand, I hate money. Because actually, my family has money to support me to go back, but it's a greed of money, time, and career that holds me back. So there's contradict inside my mind. I feel everything I have do, everything I have done, and everything I want to do is meaningless. 
I don't even know Honda one anymore. But thanks God, God always good. God brings me to Australia, brings me to Sydney here, and God is doing into my life. And I start to study the Bible. I start to pray. It didn't took me really long to finish John, the book of John. And I believe in John chapter eight, John chapter eight, verse 12. I have read in morning, he says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. At that point, I don't, I don't even know what it means, light, what? But there's a feeling of, that's what I want. I want that light in my life. So I keep coming to church, I pray, I read my Bible, I go to Bible discussion, and there's one time, during the Bible discussion, we talk about the rich and Lazarus. I mean, I always know there's a hell, like, I haven't heard about it hell, but it's the first time I really understand it's so bad. And a few days after, doing that marrying took me to Joe's place. I think we're supposed to do a persecution Bible study, but we didn't. Because at the very beginning, Joe asked me, do you have any question? And I asked him, can we can I pray for the one who is already died? And, <clears throat> and of course, after knowing all the how heaven, hell, and judgment that works, my tears just keep dropping. And that's when the moment, the loot of thought, I need to go back to Taiwan started. And a few days after, I comes up uh, at the same stage, and I called out, Jesus is my savior and my Lord. And I get baptized right there, in the swimming pool. And at that moment, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loves me, and gave himself for me. So, if you ask me, what does the cross mean to me? It's by the love of Jesus Christ who gave me a whole new meaningful life. So with this, the cross means everything to me. Amen. So, let's